Hello, I'm Matt Arkin, head of school with Georgia Cyber Academy, here again for our second edition of the Video Principal's Pen. With me today is Kayla Melvin, a seventh grader from Covington, Georgia, and the winner of our Principal's Pen student interview contest. Kaylin has several questions that she's come up with that she's going to ask me here today, as well as questions from several other students that were submitted as well. So with that, take it away, Kaylin. Okay, well thank you for that wonderful introduction. And to start with, what brought you to work at GCA? Well, that's a great question, Kaylin. Um, you know, several years ago when GCA was just about to get started, uh, my family and I were living in North Carolina and we were looking to move back to Georgia, um, where I still have family here. Um, and I was looking at a number of opportunities in Georgia of ways that I, I felt I could help improve public education in the state. As it turned out, just before uh, I was making the move, um, the State Board of Education approved the Georgia Virtual Academy at the time to open. And so uh, K-12 needed a head of school to help launch the school and really get things off the ground. And so it was a perfect opportunity for me at the time. I jumped right in and now going on four years later, it's been a wonderful experience. Well, it sounds wonderful. So tell me, what would you consider the pros and cons of working at GCA? That's a good question. I would say, you know, from the pros perspective, I, I think that I have the best job in the world. Um, I get to hear from uh, parents and students all the time uh, what a wonderful and profound impact that uh, I and GCA are having uh, on their lives and their educational experience. And so uh, anytime you can do it, have a job where you feel that, uh, that positive impact, it's a great opportunity. Um, as far as the cons, you know, I, I would say that it, it can be frustrating sometimes uh, fighting some of the misconceptions uh, that people have about uh, our students, our parents, and our teachers. Um, virtual education, as you know, is still very new in Georgia, and uh, there's a lot of folks who uh, don't understand what it means or uh, who our students and teachers really are and the amount of, uh, of work and effort that they put into really getting a high quality public education. Do you feel strongly against any of the programs used? Well, Caitlin, I would say that if we felt strongly against any of the programs we use, that we wouldn't use them. Um, that being said, I do feel strongly against the fact that um, you know, there are many programs that our students don't have access to, that students in brick and mortar schools and uh, students in virtual schools in other states do have access to um, due to our funding situation. You know, things like uh, foreign language, art, music, and there's a number of uh, wonderful academic enrichment opportunities that um, our students would greatly benefit from. Um, as of right now, we still don't have the funding to be able to offer those, but I'm certainly hopeful that in the very near future, we will. And um, I think that's going to open up another world of opportunities for all of our students. So, what is the funniest experience you've had with GCA? The funniest experience uh, I've had with GCA? Well, I would say that uh, probably other people would say uh, seeing me dancing the electric slide at Piedmont Park last year was probably their funniest experience at GCA. Uh, as for myself, uh, the funniest thing I always find is uh, hearing other people's um, preconceptions, uh, parents and learning coaches, of what they thought I would be like uh, before meeting me um, out at events or outings or testing or things like that. Well, thank you for answering those questions and I will be starting the new questions now. So, will we be adding 10th through 12th grades? Uh, definitely. Um, right now we actually have a uh, application in with the Georgia Charter Commission. And we're hoping to hear the good news next month um, that would uh, allow GCA to expand to serve grades 10 through 12 uh, over the next few years. So definitely everyone, please keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> well, wonderful. How would you compare GCA academically to traditional public schools? Well, that's a good question. Um, I would say, you know, looking at our academic performance, we certainly compare very strongly with uh, brick and mortar schools in Georgia. We've made AYP each of the last two years. and. Um, our academic growth that we've shown is fairly unparalleled by other schools in Georgia. Um, that being said, you know, I, I definitely think that you know, virtual education, GCA, we're not trying to replace the traditional brick and mortar school. Um, there are, I mean, the reason why we're here is there are a number of students whose needs just aren't being met by the traditional brick and mortar school. Maybe there are students who are falling behind and need a chance to catch up. Maybe there are uh, gifted students who just need more of a challenge that they're not able to get. Um, there are students with uh, health issues or special needs, uh, students with uh, special talents or uh, pursuing uh, athletic or entertainment opportunities and need the flexibility of their schedule. And, you know, some students just don't have access to a, a quality local school nearby. And so what we're trying to do is to help those students. And I think if you look at our academic results and what we've been able to achieve with those students, um, that is really impressive. 
especially considering the uh, low amount of resources that we've had access to. Do you wish you had the opportunity to have a virtual school near you as a child? Well, that's a good question. Um, I would say there's definitely a lot of things at the virtual school that would have benefited me greatly. Um, certainly the opportunity to be able to move at my own pace through a high quality curriculum would have been something that I would have loved um, going through school. Um, you know, also, there's certainly a number of opportunities and uh, course selections and electives and things that being in a virtual school uh, opens up that uh, I would have really loved to take advantage of too. I mean, fortunately for me, you know, I was uh, able to go to some really high quality public schools. I'm a product of public schools. I uh, went to a two-room schoolhouse in rural New Hampshire for elementary school and then I graduated from a 2,000 student suburban high school here in Georgia. Um, so I've seen uh, several different ends of the uh, public school spectrum. Um, but not every student has an access to a quality public school. And so, you know, really uh, those students who need more than they're able to get from their local school is what we're trying to offer. Um, but I think I certainly would have been a lot, been excited about a lot of what GCA has to offer uh, back when I was going through school too. What a lot of people don't understand is the difference between virtual and homeschooling. Can you explain that for us? That's a good question, Caitlin. Um, what I like to call virtual schools like GCA is really public schooling at home um, versus homeschooling. Um, all of our students are required to adhere to all the requirements of, uh, of public schooling and all the accountability that comes with it too. Our students take all the same tests um, that students in brick and mortar public schools do. Uh, the same attendance requirements, the same graduation requirements are in place. And certainly the, the scrutiny that our curriculum and school's performance um, are there as well. Probably the single biggest difference is just the teacher. All GCA students have access to a uh, certified and highly experienced and highly talented uh, GCA teacher, which is uh, not something you get with a traditional homeschooling uh, background. I think that's something that our families really appreciate and our students really benefit from. Yes. So how do you feel you can connect with thousands of students statewide in your position? That's a good question, Caitlin. That's a good question. Um, you know, certainly I, I get out to as many uh, outings and events uh, as I can. You know, one thing I'm really excited about uh, next month in December is the Wonderland of Gingerbread events mm -hmm. taking place across the entire state. Uh, and certainly, you know, during CRCT testing time, I'm able to get to uh, the large number of test sites and meet a lot of students and parents. And really, that's one of the the funnest times of the year. Um, you know, not just for meeting to meet the students, it's, it's really great to see how much fun all the students and, and parents have. You wouldn't think going to a test site for, uh, for five days would be a, a fun experience to take a standardized test, but um, you know, really with the work that our parents and students and teachers put in, uh, it's a great experience. But really the best way that I'm able to stay connected to all of our students is through our teachers. Um, you know, our teachers touch every student at GCA and they're really the ones who are taking on that responsibility for all of our students' academic success. And so in my role, what I try and do is to support the teacher and to give them what they need to be successful. You know, and the great thing is our teachers are never shy about uh, bringing back to me uh, issues or concerns or ideas uh, to benefit their students or they hear from their students and their families as well. And so our teachers are, are very, very good at keeping me grounded uh, in the needs of our individual students. And um, you know, the more I can do to make them successful, the more they can do to make all of our students successful. Well, that concludes all our questions for today. So thank you for taking your time and knowledge to answer these questions. Well, thank you very much, Caitlin, for coming out today and asking me these questions. It was really a pleasure meeting you. And uh, thank you to all of the GCA students who submitted some questions uh, for the interview with the principal's pen. Please stay tuned for more video principles, pens in the future, and other contests as well. Um, I hope you continue to have a great year with GCA. Have a wonderful holiday season if I don't talk to you via video before then. And please continue to make it a great day at GCA. Take care, everyone.